Hey guys, Target Cyclone FPV, and I'm going to do another frame build right now, and this is going to be on the, uh, this is the Black Bat 220, it's a 220 series frame, it's a very thin frame as far as it narrow wise, uh, and I actually um, started doing this video a minute ago, and then had to stop because I had a call come in that was important, and so instead of opening it fresh again, I mean I've already opened the, um, the frame up, uh, I'm, I've kind of package it again real quickly so that we can reopen again so you can see the contents but you're going to notice it's coming out of a, a metal bag now or a uh, sorry a static um, a static uh, anti-static bag or whatever uh, and so if it looks like it's already been opened it's because i opened it about five minutes ago and then i figure we'll start over instead of splicing the video so here's what i'm gonna do let's get the picture sharing here picture and picture going boom there we go here's the workbench here's everything so let's get started. So what I'm not going to do though is I'm not going to open any of this stuff. Uh, it does only have one set of pads. It's just that I I found some on the table here from another build. I'm not going to open any of these because these um, are already in our builds, and this is basically the lipo um, plate. And if you watch any other builds, you'll see it. But I'm going to start leaving these closed so I don't. I mean, it's just wasting them to open them. No, I'm not going to use them for anything except for this build. So here goes though. Here are the parts. And like always, we're going to go ahead and open the parts up, lay them out, measure them, so you guys have an idea of what we're working with. Okay. And like I said, I've already done this once, so I'm pretty familiar now with this. And uh, so here's what I'll do. First, let's start with the arms and we'll lay these out. All right. So we got the four arms, which I can tell you because I already measured them once. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the calipers on. Whoops, zero it out. All right. Uh, about 5.2 roughly, 5.19, 5.2 millimeters thick on the arms. Top plate, about two millimeters thick. And bottom plate, about three millimeters thick. And additional plates are about two millimeters thick, a little shy of two millimeters. And this would be camera plate right here, okay? All right. And let's get the rest of these open up and we'll get the screws and everything. All right, so on the screws, as with most of their, um, most of their builds, uh, most of these frames, we're gonna have two or three different size screws. So let me just get all this laid out here. We've got our top plate, our bottom plate, Camera plates and additional fasten plates right here. Reinforcements, we've got our standoffs, which we'll put over here. Okay. And then let's get our screws sorted out. So we've got two sets of screws, it looks like, two different lengths. So we've got the long screws, which we'll put over here. We've got the short screws, which we will put right next to it. Right here. They usually fall in those little grooves. Then we've got some standoffs, some nylon standoffs, which we can put over here, I guess, and some fasteners, and then some locking fasteners right here. And you'll notice there's six of them, usually only have four, but this frame's gonna be a little different. Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. So this is our bottom plate, obviously, and because you've got the grooves here for the camera inserts, camera plate inserts, this is gonna be the front, this is gonna be the back. You do also have two other plates. You have these reinforced plates here, which are gonna go on top of the arms when you fasten them. Uh, this one is going to go on the back, and you can see it's got the spots here for um, zip ties. This one will go on the front, and it's going to leave you just a small space for your board, okay? So you've got very limited space to work with on this frame, but if that works for you, if it fits what you need, this is going to be a great frame. It's extremely sturdy, and they're using a really high quality. I was checking out the, uh, the, uh, the cut here, and it's done really well. I'm, I'm impressed with their cut. Uh, I will tell you, though, if you notice, um, you see like when I mark on the, on the thing here, you're going to see this. Uh, black stuff coming off. So that's carbon fiber, right? And that's just like, uh, because, I mean, when I do mine, obviously I buff them and I wash them, but a lot of these companies, you know, these, these frames that are made, they're just done. And so what I would always do, my advice to you is to, when you get a frame, wash it real quickly, put it in some soap and water, uh, wash it off in some hot water and then dry it real quickly. And then you get all this dust out of here because you don't want to be getting this on your hands and then rubbing your eyes or anything else, okay? So for safety purposes, Make that standard practice. I don't care where you order the frame from. Just make it standard practice. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start laying this out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the, um, get the arms ready. And so to do that, for the front ones, we're gonna use this plate, and we're gonna put it on top. Now, the way that I've been seeing people doing this, and I guess I'm gonna, I'll join it only because the battery can go on the bottom here. So we're gonna put the fastener, the locking fastener on the top. Okay, so let me put that, whoops. Let me put that right here. Okay, with the next arm. There we go, do another one. There we go.
And then there's one that'll go in the middle and that'll keep the arms from moving. So we'll do that third one, pop that up here. There we go. Should lock the arms in place. It appears to. We'll knock that one out. Okay, and I'm not gonna tighten any of these down just yet until I get everything done. So next one, go down here. Put the tall screw in there. Now we're gonna put the back plate on and aim those uh, slits for the uh, zip ties outward towards the back, just like that. All right, there's one. Okay, let's do the next one here. There we go. And then we'll do the third one just to keep these from wiggling all over the place. Where did I put, you know what? I probably dropped it somewhere here. So let me just grab another one. not the same size so let me see what I did with that one when I was packing this up I think I put the screw somewhere let me make sure it's probably in my pile here but I just want to check all right so let me get this one out and let's see where I put that last one all these are about the same I think and they are so where did it go Nope. Oh, here. I think that's it. It'd fall into the back. All right, so let's get this lined back up. Okay, there we go. I better get in there while I can. Okay. Oof. My hands are a little sloppy today, I guess. I haven't had lunch, so I'm a little hungry. Got those, I guess, the lunch shakes. In either case, here we go. All right, so we got the arms in now. And that's pretty much all there is to this frame, right? So now what we do is we can tighten this down so we can get all the wiggle out of this. So let me go ahead and do that. tight in the middle. I want to make sure I get this end one too. Let's do that real quick. You know, I could probably use, tell you what, I'm going to make this a little bit faster. Hold on. I hope we are. Perfect. Let's just do this and save everybody a bunch of boring time. Okay. Alright, get this one. Yep. Alright, now we can do the middle. Okay. Let's do the other side. Now afterwards, I would probably go back and hand tighten it, but for right now, this is to at least get this to get solid and so we can finish the build. All right, there's that. Wow, that is pretty solid though. Okay, so next thing is uh, get the rest of this done. So we're gonna put the standoffs in. And so for the standoffs, use your smaller screws. Go ahead and just finger tighten this in there. All right, same thing on this side. camera plates in these are cut identical on both sides so it doesn't matter which direction you go let's just do that real quick there we go okay 
can't see. Still get used to my glasses, so bear with me. There we go. Much easier when you can see the spot. Okay, and then get your top plate. Just the small remaining screws. One. Two. And then what they've done is they've given you some remainder screws to put in your standoffs. I don't know if you guys will use your nylon standoffs. I very rarely, well, it just depends actually on, on the layout of the board, but I'm just gonna do this so you guys can get an idea of what it'll look like. All right, so there's one. And then you do have also a 2020, uh, you have the option for a 2020 stack right here. So you can see the holes right here for the 2020 stack, but there's no screws for that. You have to supply your screws for the 2020, because you're gonna use M2s, and you're also gonna to have to supply your screws for your camera. Okay, they give you the plates and everything, but you do not have uh, the screws to go in there. So again, you'll need some M2s, but those will usually come with your camera anyway. This is the last piece right here. Then we'll take a weight. It's a pretty solid frame though. So just by eyeballing it, I'm going to tell you that my big concern would be uh, how much space you have to clear things. I, I think it's going to be pretty tough. Now, the other thing I think is possible, and, and this is really just going to come down to how you would put your battery or what have you, but I think you could also probably clear room by putting it below. Um, it's done initially from the factory. The, the build would be to put the arms inside. Um, which is what we're seeing on some other frames too, but, and I just dropped that. Piece. But the problem is, is depending on what you're using, uh, you may be pretty limited on what you can put in boards here. So what I'll probably do is just do a build on this frame to see what options I can fit. Um, uh, you know, putting an XT60 on here, uh, you'll have to turn it because you won't be able to fit it at the beginning. You won't be able to fit it as the first. If you like an all in one ESC or a four in one ESC, um, I mean, I have one laying here, but I'm just going to grab another board real quick. So let's say this is F3V4, an older board, right? So the board is built in such a way like I, there's literally no room to do anything. So my guess is that uh, you could easily take these arms and put them below, but I'm not sure that that's what this is designed for. Um, so, you know, it's gonna take some, it's gonna take some work to figure out. I think you'd just be pretty limited, that's all. But that's not bad. I mean, if you have something that fits this, especially if you're using a 20 by 20, then you've got ample room. Uh, or, like I said, you could try putting the arms, I'm throwing these things all over the place. Try putting the arms on the bottom if you'd like. Uh, most likely, if I had to fit more, I would do that. But I'm gonna just gonna bring these uh, down real quick and see if I was to turn this sideways, how much room would I have? Okay, I'm hitting. I'm pretty much hitting everywhere. So let me grab a different board. I'm curious now to see what fits. Um, I'm gonna grab this F7 board and see how this does. This is the HAKRC F7, and I think that's actually gonna fit just fine. So this one looks like it'll fit, and there's room. Uh, and, the, and there is. So I mean, a board like this one, this F7 board would be fine. And then you could probably put the ESC on top of it. I do not think you'd be very successful at putting an ESC below it. Uh, you could also just have this as a standalone board and use like, uh, you know, like a HDRC narrow 50 amp, the FD50s to fit on here uh, because those are very narrow and longer ESCs if you didn't want to use a four in one. So let me just get an idea here. So if I move this out of the way and I put this F7 here, right? Uh, let me do it to where I've got the USB and everything properly done. Okay. so. With that, I do have enough room. It's actually, it's actually not bad. You can see that there's definitely, uh, there's clearance here without any issues. Uh, the board sits kind of high. I think we could lower it and still get away with it. As far as an ESC goes, um, I'll grab the ESC, 
see like this there's there's just no way I can't you know, there's no way that would work uh, even if you go with the ESC like it goes with it if these have the XT60s on them like here's the here's another HAKRC uh, XT or uh, ESC right so let's just look at this so you've got your XT60 on the back so that's not happening so if you turn it now you have your I mean well you could fit it just like that actually uh, well, no, I don't think that sits very well. Uh, no. So, I mean, it would, but it's the, it's wider than the arms and then the gap in the arm. So, uh, my guess would be that you would have to put this board, then space and put the ESC on top of it, which I mean, is not unheard of. Uh, and I'm trying to think of how much space you would need by the looks of it. If you wanted to have that ESC go out the back, you probably need about five millimeter spacer, which means that which means that you could take this out. I'm just gonna try this because I can't end this video without having a 100% answer here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out and remove their screws. Now, this is meaning that you would, you know, you'd probably have to get another set of screws. So hopefully you guys have those. I mean, you don't wanna sit there and be without that. So I'm gonna take a 14 millimeter uh, screw and I'm gonna put that in here and I'm gonna fasten it down. This actually may be too short, but I'm gonna see. If I put a 14 millimeter and fasten it, ah, come here. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to get this. There we go. Well, I thought there we go. Okay. So if we can do this one. My hope is that once it comes down to that arm, it quits spinning. And no, there's enough room for it to spin. So <clears throat> if the 14 millimeter will work, and I'm going to see if it will. Uh, no, that'll be, sh well, I guess it would if I use the standoff. So let me just do that just for the sake of using the standoffs and seeing where we're at. That's just going to make it kind of tall, but that's okay. For the sake of seeing if this fits, it's worth it. Let me get another one. Okay. I don't even know if I need that part though. Um, I only put that in there to usually, but this is very close. Let me see. Yeah, they don't give you much room there, so I'm gonna use it. Probably save yourself a millimeter if you just go with a one millimeter washer instead of a two millimeter um, fastener, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. All I wanna do right now is make this thing fit and make sure we have an idea of what components can be used and what can't. So I think ESC on the bottom in general is out. Um, and I wouldn't say across the board it's out, but I'd say just because I don't feel like going through 200 ESCs that I've got in inventory to find out which one would fit, I will say that without a doubt, if it's that much trouble, then it's out. So, but there's no harm in putting an ESC at the top either. Now I suppose, I can't stop dropping these things. I suppose the other thing is that if you wanted to put the battery on the top, if you felt like you could do that, then you could invert the screws here, these, and put them on the bottom, which would give you more clearance here. I mean, there's a couple different options. Uh, or you just put the arms on the outside and hope for the best. I'm not sure that's how, I know that's not how it was intended, but I mean, there, you can always modify if you want. Right now, I just want to see with, based on how it was done from them on their, on one of the pictures I saw from them, I want to see what limits there are. All right, so let's get this last screw out. So there's that work. It's kind of a pain, but there you go, because you usually don't have the top on and all that right now. Let's go ahead and put our flight controller in. Make sure we've got good clearance to the bottom. Oh yeah, we've got ample clearance. It's almost overkill. But for the sake of just testing this out, I am going to take this top off. This is driving me nuts. Let me remove this real quick. Put these screws here so I can at least function better.
Okay. Now, what I was going to do was use their um, spacers, or their standoffs, I mean the nylon the ones that came with them. All right. Let's see. Probably going to give us too much room, but hey, it's at least we know that it will work then without issue. There it is. And you could always go smaller. I mean, you go with a longer screw and then reduce the, um, we just hold out, but let's just see what we got. So there's our ESC. And we still have ample room. I mean, we still have enough room to put a VTX on this thing. Cause look, if I do this, I still have ample room. So if I was to take, let's say, oh, I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna do this just, just because I want to see what the end result is like. So bear with me a second. Let me grab a, uh, another set of standoffs here. And obviously I would not, this is like going higher than I would ever go on something. I would usually uh, have this measured out to save as much space as possible. I'm only doing this so I can see where our limit is, okay? Now, I was gonna grab a Panda RC VTX. We just got those in and I'm really excited to put those on, but they are sitting in the other uh, play, other storage right now, so I can go get those in a second. But I think what I'll do just for the sake of it is, let me go grab a, uh, Oh, I don't know. Go grab a rush tank or something. Hold on one second. Okay, so this will be a rush tank. At least we can get an idea. As a matter of fact, this will be the build configuration I do for this one. If this fits, then we're golden, and we'll use this as the build. All right, and then we'll sell this one. You guys can get it, and I usually charge for build, but if I do it as a sample, then no big deal. All right, so if we put that here, oh yeah, that's gonna give us ample room. Okay, now I've got, I wouldn't, I mean, it would be measured much better than this, but my, my whole thing is, is this is, like I said, this is worst case. So at worst case, I think we've got a very good fit. Okay, so this is worst case. Because ideally what I do is I just run one solid screw from the bottom all the way to the top. I don't use nylon standoffs on every layer. I don't like that. Um, but again, that gives me a worst case scenario. And so I don't mind working with it for right now. So this will be the other build. Let's just say that. That's cool. And I think we're going to do one build a day anyway for December, for the rest of December. And then in 2020, that is actually our goal, especially with our new facility that's opening up. Oops, all good. All right, so let me put that down. Tighten this real quick. Okay, so now we can put this back on and close everything up and get a better idea of how much room we have. And I think we're actually gonna have a ton of room. Holy cow, and we do, look at that. Still, with three boards with that much stack, now that's the that's a millimeter off on standoff, which is why it looks slanted. So we can look at it this way, I guess. Look how much room you have. I mean, you got plenty of room here. Look at all that gap in between all of this. You've got at least five, six millimeters, five millimeters here, and then probably about four millimeters there. Well, not if you count those, so maybe about three millimeters. So you got three, uh, six, five. I mean, that's plenty of room, and you still have room for a receiver, uh, which you could easily put back here, uh, and you have your zip tie room here, and then you could bring your XT60 out and tie it right here, or bring it up, uh, and then you've got room for your antennas to come out so I'd say overall, I'm really surprised. I mean, it's very compact, but this is good. I wouldn't move the arms or do anything. Uh-oh. Hey, come here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just saw my two Yorkies running, so I've got to go put them uh, away real quick. I'll be right back to finish this video. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Come here, guys. Come here. You guys need to go rest now. Y'all are driving me nuts.
was crazy. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was just talking. The next thing I know, I see two Yorkies zipping down there. Apologize. Okay. So, anyways, uh, so yeah, I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm sorry, That's, this is the real deal, okay? I don't fluff this up. Uh, so I think this is gonna be good. So this will be the next build that we do. So real excited about this one. Let me go ahead and put these back on though so I can set this aside. And uh, we'll knock this build out as well. Uh, so let me just, and then like I said, if you guys are interested, the one that I build, you can buy it. There'll be no labor charged on it. Uh, and I'll let you know. All right, so uh, let me put this back on. I did not get a weight. I put the components on, but I'll weigh it later uh, when we do the build, I guess. But so far, I'm very pleased with this. I actually thought that it was gonna be very limited uh, overall. Let's do this. I thought, I thought it was gonna be limited, but this is pretty cool. And it's very solid. And they used pretty good, uh, I mean, it's almost five and a half uh, millimeters thick on the arms, three millimeter base. I like it. So we'll get the camera in there and then we'll start wiring this up and see how it goes, okay? All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this particular, uh, what was this one again? Sorry, this was the Black Bat 220. Sorry, I got about 100 frames I got to do. You can see them start getting hung up behind me here, right? Plus, all back there. There's just a lot of product right now. Uh, but if you have any questions, guys, please feel free to email me at targetcyclonfpv.com. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook. And other than that, be safe. God bless. Spend time with your family. You never know when you run out of time. So do that, please, okay? And other than that, guys, we'll see you soon. See you. Bye.